Okay, so the best way to get familiar with this neck is to take it for a spin. So here we go. Okay, we'll uh, analyze a 20 meter dipole hung 30 feet up in the backyard. This exercise uh, leads you through the creation of a simple dipole and really illustrates some of the basic steps in creating an ESNEC model. So in the control center, that's the control center, locate the open action button and click it. We will choose dipole1.easy for our demonstration. This has been selected now and uh, the bar at the top of the control center information window should now read dipole in free space, which it does. And that's the title of the antenna description stored in the file, dipole1.easy. Let's enter a title for our backyard dipole. So we'll just click anywhere on the uh, title bar. This opens up a dialog box, and in the dialog box, we'll just write in backyard dipole, and we'll click OK. So now, the name of our dipole has changed to the new name backyard dipole. Let's change the frequency, because what I was working on really, uh, dipole.1, uh, dipole one dot easy uh, was a uh, frequency much too high for the 20 meter dipole so we'll click on the frequency line this opens up another dialog box and we'll just write in 14 for 14 megahertz and click OK as you can see the uh, frequency has changed over to 14 megahertz for the purpose of this exercise we'll choose uh, feet for a convenient unit of measure so we'll on the units line we will change from meters over to feet like so clicking here and we'll click OK now the ground type for model dipole 1 is free space as you can see here and we'll want to model this antenna over ground this will be taken care of after we define the wires and sources in a few minutes next for now, we'll describe the antenna itself. ESNEC gives you the ability to see the modifications you're making as you make them. So we'll take advantage of this powerful feature. We will open the view antenna window by clicking on the action button in the control center. That's the view antenna action button. And the view antenna shows us our backyard dipole. Right now, uh, we will familiarize ourselves with what the uh, view antenna window gives us in terms of information. The wires window is where the wires of the antenna are actually defined. Uh, by the way, as you can see, the antenna is described in a, with the three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. Z being distance above ground. Right now our antenna is uh, somewhere on the ground and uh, we'll just fix that in a minute. Now the wires window is where the wires of the antenna are actually defined. That's the one here. Okay, wires window. The position of each wire in space is specified by giving its X, Y, and Z coordinates, as I've just shown you on the view antenna. These coordinates represent distances from the origin. For example, look at the numbers in the wires window for dipole 1. It consists of one wire, here, which extends along the Y axis. The Y coordinate of end 1 is about minus 82 feet. And the Y coordinate of end 2 is about plus 82 feet. So the wire is about 1.64 feet long. Obviously that's too short for a 20 meter dipole, so we'll see to that in a minute. You can confirm this 
by moving the mouse cursor to the y-axis line in the view antenna the y-axis line like so and the information about the antenna its length and uh, the segment length that is being pointed to uh, the diameter of the wire and etc etc all the information or the coordinate information appears in the view antenna by simply moving the pointer over the antenna dipole one is a half wavelength long at about 300 megahertz right now so it's much too short for a 20 meter dipole let's make the wire length we want now assuming our backyard dipole was designed using 468 divided by frequency in megahertz to determine the length well, that's just to give us a, a starting point the length is uh, according to the formula 33.43 feet for 14 mega megahertz so as neck doesn't require any symmetry and we're free to choose where in space we put the origin and so for co convenience we'll put one end of the wire at x y equals 0 comma 0 here x y comma 0 so we'll have to change the minus 82 to 0 like so of end 1 click return and we see that we now have end 1 at x0 y0 and right now it's 0 feet above ground we'll see to that in a minute So now um, we'll move over to the next cell of end one, Z, and we'll indicate that we want it to be 30 feet up above the ground, like so. The court, and we'll just hit return. The coordinates are now, <laughs> look at the view antenna. We have one end of the antenna up at 30 feet and the other end is still on the ground. Okay, so we'll have, we'll have to correct that. Similarly, then we'll uh, modify the um, coordinates of end one, uh, I mean end two, to be zero. And Y will be 33.43 feet away from the beginning of the antenna. 33.43 feet long and its end will also be 30 feet above ground hit return and here we go now we have if you look at the view antenna we have an antenna starting at the origin zero and extending away from origin zero 33.43 feet away and its 30 feet above ground 30 feet above ground okay finally we define the wire diameter uh, we will assume uh, that the antenna will be made with uh, 12 gauge wire so we'll change that in the wires information the diameter column is here and we'll just enter 12 gauge like so so the last column is to define the number of segments for the wire now ESNET requires that the user you and I indicates the number of segments that the antenna should be divided um, simply because you know we could instruct ESNET to use three segments for a dipole that's one segment to connect two because his neck needs that and one segment to the left and one segment to the right for a dipole but the result of the computations would not be as precise as it will be as they will be with 11 segments so the more segment the, the more segments the better however the free demo version version 5.0 limits us to 20 segments which is 
more than enough for a dipole. A simple antenna like that doesn't need that many. The uh, accuracy will be quite satisfactory with 11 segments. So we have already have 11 segments chosen in the segment number of segments column. So I'll just enter that. Notice that the view antenna display has changed to show that the antenna uh, is now up 30 feet in the air. It starts, like I said, with the origin at zero and it extends away 33.43 feet away from the origin. The next step is to define the source. This is connected at the point where the power is applied to the real antenna, in this case, the center of the wire. So we close the wires window and uh, we'll open the sources window by clicking on the sources line in the control center information. Here it goes. Sources. In the sources window grid you can see that there's one source, source number one, which is placed on wire number one, 50% away from the end of number one. This is where we want the source to be, right in the middle. The source could have been connected through a transmission line, of course. However, this will affect only the impedance seen by the source. It will have no effect on the antenna gain, the antenna pattern, or any other characteristics. No transmission line will be used in this example. That will be done later on in another example. So we'll close the sources window by clicking this, the close window in the upper right corner. Now it's time to deal with the ground. Now presuming you don't have a perfect ground plane in your backyard and for many wavelengths in all directions, you'll want to do the analysis over real ground or as close, to as close as possible to real ground. So we'll click on the ground type line and select real. The ground type line. Ground type line. Oh, here we go. Ground type. And we'll use real ground. The height of the antenna will determine which ground model we use. If you have a fast computer, you can always choose high accuracy, like so unless you need to make a connection to the ground. Those, uh, let's choose Mininec type ground for now. That model is good enough with horizontal wires, which are at least 0.2 wavelengths high, and it's fast, that's the advantage. Now choose Mininec, and we'll click OK. Finally, we need to specify the ground characteristics and we'll click on the ground description line. This uh, will open up the media window. Ground description. The media window. Note that the ground description selection isn't visible unless ground type is real. The media window is where specification of real ground is done. For this exercise, let's suppose your backyard has the characteristics of very good ground. So we'll move the cursor, the mouse cursor, to either the condition or dielectric. Either one of those two cells in the medium number one row and click, we'll click the right mouse button. As you can see, the dialog box for ground characteristics appears and the uh, antenna description file when, when it was opened had average pastoral heavy clay description. For now we'll use very good pastoral rich central US description. Click OK and right now the uh, sh window should show 0 0.0303 for the conductivity and 20 for the dielectric constant. We'll close the media window by clicking on the upper right hand corner 
This completes the creation of the model itself. We can choose what to calculate and display. Note that all the information in the control center, uh, the information window of the control center, is saved with the description when the description is saved to a file. In addition, frequency sweep, near field analysis setups, selections, etc. All this information is also saved in the, in the file when we leave. If we were to leave right now, we would uh, leave by exiting and simply by exiting all the information would be saved in the file. We, can, we could choose to exit without saving if need be, but for this exercise later on we'll exit and it will save all the information in the file. We know that the dipole maximum, uh, the dipole's maximum lobe uh, will be at zero degrees, that is broadside to the dipole antenna. But at what angle above the horizon will it be maximum? That we'll find out in a minute. We'll run an elevation plot to find that out and we'll click on the plot type in uh, the plot type row rather in the control center the plot type here and we'll choose elevation click like that and then the uh, azimuth angle for the plot is zero degrees broadside to the antenna which is where we'd like to look and all the other parameters look fine to plot the pattern so we'll click the far field plot action button in the control center like that as you can see the um, calculation was very quick we'll do that again oh it has already calculated so it won't show again but anyway uh, I'm using um, a very fast computer some of you may not so uh, expect perhaps the calculation to last a few maybe up to a few seconds but eventually you get a two-dimensional view of the radiation pattern. So uh, by clicking on the uh, far field plot action button, uh, ESNEC computed and displays the 2D far field pattern. Uh, you'll uh, briefly see the calculation progress window, like I said, but the calculation uh, should be quick. When it's finished, you should see the plot and some text below showing the characteristics of the or the information about the pattern. If you don't see the text below the plot, by the way, uh, open the uh, two-dimensional plot window view menu and select show data. View. Right now it's clicked. If it had not been clicked, you would have no information on the pattern. So we'll click it back. The plot represents an elevation slice of the antenna pattern. From the text in the data box you can see that the pattern is maximum at 34 degrees and um, uh, that is 34 degrees above the horizon rather I'm sorry and uh, that's uh, okay 33 34 degrees the gain is 6.82 dBi, 35, 6.81, 33, 6.82, 32, 6.8. So it's really at 34 degrees at its maximum. You could, you could see uh, that just by clicking on the cursor along the pattern, you can choose any angle you want, 29, 28, 27 degrees, 26, 25, and that gives you the information on the gain. For example, at 24 degrees, it's 6.09 dBi. So we'll put it back at 34 degrees. Just by sli uh, clicking and sliding the point there. Okay, so now let's click the source data action button in the control center. Source data. And uh, 
this gives us the information about the source the fact that the impedance is uh, as you can see 79.16 ohms there and that there's a, a negative reactive portion of minus about 45 ohms um, this tells us that the antenna is operating below resonance and needs to be lengthened if resonance is important the formula that we used to start off with was 468 divided by frequency in megahertz and that's just an approximation the exact resonant length depends on the wire diameter the height of the antenna above ground and the type of ground so the source data display also shows us that if a 50 ohm transmission line were connected to this system to the antenna rather uh, the standing wave on the line would be about 2.3 to 1 and if a 75 ohm line is used the standing wave the SWR would be one about 1.8 so for now we'll close the source data and in the view antenna display an additional line has appeared above the antenna that's this one here this indicates by the distance of the line from the antenna the distance away from it it indicate it gives us an indication of the magnitude of the current along the wire you can see that the current is maximum at the center of the antenna and uh, tapers off to zero towards the ends the current indication appears only after cal calculations have been done so in the two-dimensional plot window we'll open the file menu and select save trace as two-dimensional file menu save trace as and uh, we'll enter the name backyard dipole and click save We'll click save by saving by clicking save uh, the uh, file will end up being called or named backyard dipole dot pf you may want to be to to use that uh, save it and use that uh, later on uh, as you further explore the capabilities of esnec now we will save the antenna description the entire antenna descriptions by clicking save as action button here and um, we'll be we'll enter again backyard dipole you can see that uh, there's there was an antenna uh, some antenna notes that came along with the file that we opened at the beginning of the exercise you can add your own uh, uh, notes here but anyway right now we'll just save the antenna it says would you like to save the current antenna, antenna notes with backyard dipole dot easy why not for the moment why not by the way I mentioned a little bit earlier just a few minutes ago that the uh, antenna represented a negative reactive portion when we looked at the source data there was a negative reactive portion of minus 45 ohms and that told us that the antenna needed to be lengthened so why not try and do that just for the sake of uh, demonstration and see what happens now remember we used the uh, view antenna right oh, we'll close that we don't need that for the moment we used the view antenna to uh, locate it in space and uh, the uh, wires information to uh, define 
and one and the length of the antenna which was 33.43 feet now we need to lengthen the antenna to reduce the reactive component so let's try 35 feet just for the for just for fun and see mm -hmm. what happens go back to the main panel and we'll click on source data and see that oh now the impedance is 90 ohms and it has a positive reactive component so we've lengthened much too much okay close that get back to from 33.43 let's go only up to 34 feet click enter mm -hmm. go back source data oh now we see that the imp impedance is 82 or 83 ohms roughly and there's a negative component reactive com component again of this time only minus 21 ohms so we're getting closer as you can see uh, 33.43 let's try uh, 33.75 mm -hmm. for the sake of uh, the demo let's get back to source and oh my we we have an impedance of again minus 31 ohms so you can see you can go back and forth like that and eventually you can get the exact dimension that the model uh, will give for this type of antenna above your type of ground at the height you chose so this um, concludes uh, the introductory demo of ESNET.50 uh, 5.0 rather and that's the free version there's much much more to ESNEC than that of course and uh, you can I, I certainly um, suggest that you download a copy and take it for a spin uh, by the way you will find a copy uh, to download uh, waiting for Firefox to open up here okay We'll uh, just uh, as neck, Oops. as neck, and at asneck.com, you will be able to get a copy of uh, either as neck, as neck plus, or as neck pro the versions that uh, give you the possibility of using more segments than a maximum of 20 but for now the free version as NEC version 5.0 is available here just by clicking on here you'll get the information and you'll be able to download the program it's about five megabytes so the help file uh, that comes with the uh, um, software is very very uh, exhaustive and uh, very complete and it will guide you through the more advanced features that I'm sure you'll you'll enjoy discovering so this concludes our demonstration and uh, I uh, urge you to uh, to try it and have fun